everyone. Well, uh, this market just keeps getting more and more uh, confusing and chaotic, um, and uh, that does happen. Uh, this year has been quite confusing and chaotic. If it weren't for uh, a few good names that had emerged earlier this year that were entirely playable and profitable, but uh, as of late, uh, the leading stocks um, are really spinning their wheels. There's real no real uh, traction on the part of stocks or markets or, or conviction um, in either direction. So we've got this kind of sloppy, sideways, chop slop kind of uh, situation and that's been on our hands for a number of weeks. Um, and uh, this is where patience really kicks in and it's uh, definitely a virtue um, when uh, the markets are like this. Uh, fortunately, you know, these periods um, will always come to an end, so it's just a matter of uh, waiting it out. Um, and in the meantime, if you see something worth playing, maybe put on less of a position than you normally would, as we've been advising uh, members. Uh, the, uh, the tone of the market, um, in terms of uh, the, the, the fundamental global situation, is still pretty uh, dank. Um, the Commodity Research Bureau did hit, uh, I think you could call it, over 40-year uh, lows um, uh, recently. It hadn't seen those lows since the early 70s. So uh, the dearth of demand on commodities is very prevalent um, in this market. Uh, oil continues to seem seemingly not find a bottom. Um, and uh, global markets are all you know, in, in the throes of their own bull uh, revenue their own bearish uh, situations, uh, with many markets off typically 20 to 40 percent of their peak uh, price. Um, the U.S. market is the, the lone standing midget in the room where the markets, I think, are down uh, about 3 to 4 percent, depending on which uh, index you look at, off their peaks. But uh, quantitative easing uh, remains alive and well in these central banks, and uh, money's got to find somewhere to go, so it goes into the dollar and it goes into uh, U.S. stocks. Uh, as far as uh, you know, the, the health of, of leading stocks, um, you've got to be really selective in this market, um, and you might want to uh, take a vacation and take advantage of the, the, this period, uh, this time of year, um, because uh, the thing is, you want to, if, if you've had some gains this year, you want to hold on to them as best you can. Um, and at the same time, though, don't take your eye off the market, because sometimes these markets will get up and go again when you least expect it. And uh, so, you know, as far as running our screens and doing our normal due diligence, um, that hasn't changed one bit. That generally never does change because we're very well aware that, that when the markets look about as bad as they can, uh, sometimes that's when they start uh, start going again and they're off to the races. So, you know, as of now, uh, we are uh, maintaining, well, I will speak for myself, I'm maintaining fairly comp uh, conservative stance in terms of uh, my investment investments into the market. Um, even even the, uh, the, the the VIX model, um, which has done fantastic uh, this year, which is why I launched it recently, and it has, it's still in beta phase, but uh, that, that beta phase will come, come to an end. Um, but in this kind of environment, uh, the model is um, it's minimizing its losses very well, so at least it can showcase how it handles worse, the worst kind of market environments. But on the other hand, um, you know, it's not making the gains it did earlier this year or in prior years during testing. So that does tell me, telegraphs to me, that this market is very, very uh, treacherous. Um, and, you know, even more so than it was earlier this year, where it was very sideways and, and sloppy. Um, yet that model is able to do to do very well um, because it, it's, it's very, um, it can be very short-lived in its signals. But because these uh, instruments do move around quite a bit, uh, you can, you can, quickly get, you know, six, six, eight, ten percent gains in a matter of days, and then if you keep doing that, ultimately you're going to be sitting on a nice profit. Um, but right now, uh, I'd say in the last couple of months, this, this market's been very unruly, so uh, it's time to be patient, wait it out, and um, and uh, that's what we're here for. <laughs> so when we do start to see some, some daylight, uh, you know, I think that will manifest in um, in some names actually uh, going the distance and uh, finding some sort of direction. And with that, uh, we'll turn it over to Gil. Um, just trying to keep myself awake here. Um, it seems to me that I mean, you're just in a choppy market. It seems like every morning we come in, you spin the roulette wheel and see what number you land on. 
and hopefully your the winning number comes up for you. Uh, otherwise, you're going the opposite direction. The one thing that bothers me here, you see on the Nasdaq chart here. I'm gonna pull this out and make it a little bigger. Uh, you can see that we have one, two, three, four. You count yesterday. I know it's blue. I'm not sure why it does that, but it's a higher volume on a a down day. You've got several distribution days along the peak here. And you can also see, if you look at this peak here, the selling off the peak wasn't all that heavy, and it's a little heavier now. At the same time, what I'm also seeing is if you look at the Russell 2000, pull up the old rut here, it's been selling off straight down for the last uh, several days. So so it's diverging. It made a high here, and then it rolled over. And it did that at about the same time that the NASDAQ was pushing to uh, new highs. Uh, was that an all-time high, Dr. K? No, it, didn't, it fell a little bit short, but it got, got close. And uh, but, it, but it's been coming down, and, and really so is the NASDAQ, even though you have this one choppy uh, upside jerk um, back uh, on Thursday, a week ago, actually. Was that a week ago? No, it was on Friday. Remember, we were early in the day during the webinar last Thursday. I was telling you I thought we were going to head lower. And we did, uh, but I wouldn't have been able to tell you that the next day jobs number is going to come out looking somewhat strong, which you know keeps allegedly keeps the Fed on track for raising interest rates when they meet on December 16th, which is next week. Is that what next Wednesday, Dr. K, or Tuesday? They, you know, you saw always be Tuesday. Now it's gone to Wednesday or Thursday or I don't know, something like that. Anyways. Um, that the strong jobs number keeps the Fed on track, but you know they were citing the sell-off uh, the prior day as being caused by Janet Yellen uh, being a bit hawkish in her comments during a speech, and and it's you know none of that makes any sense. Okay, so one day Janet Yellen's hawkish and the market sells off. The next day a strong jobs number means that the Fed's on track to raise rates, and that's good. And I don't I don't really quite understand. So so all I see this market is doing right now, and you can see it really in the index, is you're just chopping back and forth. Uh, similar situation, the S&P, which is trying to hold on to the 50-day today, but can't get back above the 200-day. And that's still in a weak position with the 50-day line underneath the 200-day. Uh, but you're just chopping back and forth, and it seems like there's no real accumulation of stocks going on. It's just a bunch of machines playing ping pong with each other, algo pong as I like to call it. And things are just getting batted back and forth. Now, you could argue that some of the back and forth action is merely the process of setting up bases. Okay, so what is the market looking forward to since it is a forward looking mechanism? You know, just looking at this UVXY chart, Dr. K, it looks to me like you've got some pocket pivots in here. It wants to go higher. So, I don't know. Yeah, the, the problem with it's this market is... It's, it's done that many times, and you can't use that as a, any kind of reliable indicator. Right. So, I mean, so while you're seeing these stocks... Uh, or best stocks. Go ahead. I was saying, uh, yeah, it's not a reliable... And I, I've studied all these different possibilities, but uh, certainly that, that's not one of them. Um, and pocket pivots, as far as I can tell so far, I mean, it's, it, it's ground is in stocks. That's where it's, it's most reliable. Um, but no, I, actually, the, the you, I don't look at U, UVXY per se. Um, I, I look at more of a derivative uh, to get some some kind of valuable information um, from these kinds of in indexes. But on the surface, they're not uh, they're not so useful. Yeah. So so you know you're seeing uh, stocks like Facebook basing. I, I've been watching Apple, wondering if this maybe is trying to base. But it, it broke down and it's been shortable at the 120 level. You, you can see that you, you short it at 120, you buy it back at the 50-day or cover it and then go long. Same thing with Facebook. You short it at 108 and you buy it back underneath 104. You do that over and over again and you're just going to make piles of money. Uh, the only problem with that is you never know whether you're going to break out or whether you're going to break down. And some days the market looks like they cannot get rid of stocks fast enough. I mean, they're just like... like uh, what was it on Monday? Was it Dutch hit? They were just hurling stuff out the window, and things are just getting hit left and right, and the volume's coming in heavy, and it looks bad because uh, it is, and it, and you don't really want to buy into that. But the bottom line is you kind of have to hold your nose and do that, and then look to trade them on the bounce. And yesterday, similar situation. You see them knock things around, and uh, it looks pretty ugly. And then they bounce it today. But, you know, the Nasdaq came down and approached the 50-day moving average. It undercut the, la the low of last uh, Thursday. 
and I guess you could say it's coming to the top of this gap up uh, rising window, which pre pre presents some potential support here. What I'm watching for now is whether we roll back through the 50-day line. The S&P down here has already gone through yesterday, but this it's getting similar support along the lows here to undercut this low. Now it's trying to rally up into the 200-day. It may not make it. And, and the, like I said, the thing that bothers me here is the divergence we're seeing. The, the broader market is much weaker. And the thing that's led this market higher have, has been these big cap names. And if, and if you start to see them fall out of bed, in other words, break through, you, know, you see a name like Facebook, for example, uh, break through support and break through the 50, and then you're going to have some, you got some real problems. And that's something to keep an eye out for, I think. Uh, in terms of making trades and looking to ride a trend, I don't think there is a trend. And it's just as easily uh, could be construed that uh, based on the action that we're going to go lower from here rather than higher. And, and so it's just a big roulette wheel, a big crapshoot, and it feels that way. And sometimes the market's like that. But these days it really does feel like you've got machines slapping the market around uh, more than anything else. And things just chopping back and forth. If they're setting up to go higher, then I think you'll see breakouts occurring at some point. Now, I don't know if we get a, a year-end rally. Dr. K, we've never seen a, a sell-off in uh, in December, right? Not, Have we? Um, you know, I think if you go back even 50 years, I don't think December's ever been a, a catalytic month, you know, or catastrophic month, um, not to my knowledge. I mean, I, I, I look back into the early 70s, and there's, there's nothing out there um, in December. Yeah, December has its short, sharp pullbacks like it has recently, uh, last year, for instance. So uh, it, it still means you got to keep your eye on the ball with, uh, with regard to um, you know, holding, holding any sort of positions. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of looks, what we're going through now almost looks a little bit like what we saw last year at this time. And then you bottomed out in the middle of the month and you went back to the highs and you chopped around. And January started to look pretty grim. I remember thinking we we're going to break down. I got very short in here and then the market slapped against me and uh, pushed higher. But you can also see if we look at the New York Composite, the NYA, it's it's well below its 50-day, not doing much, not rallying very much today. I think it's up half a percent, so trying to keep pace with the general market. But it, you know, it's it's looking a little bit weak. And you had a similar divergence like this back in July and June that the NYA peak, uh, peaked out and started lower, even as the uh, Nasdaq. In June was trucking higher. See that? So during the month of June, Nasdaq was going higher, but during the month of June, uh, NYC, NYA or New York Stock Exchange Composite Index is moving lower. So you're seeing this sort of divergence again, and I got to wonder if this is trouble and telling us something's up. And, and you notice that the action is very erratic. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. You know, one day things are looking good, and even on an intraday basis, like yesterday, I think the Dow was up over 190 points. And then I stepped away from my desk for maybe five minutes, and I come back, and everything's flying the other way. And so you start to get the feeling like, like you can't take your eyes off uh, off the ball here. Otherwise, they'll have you down in a hurry, and the market looks like it's ready to blow up. And uh, and so you have to take some action if they're starting to hit your positions. And, and so it's, it's very tough. And uh, I think you just kind of roll with that and recognize it's tough. And like Dr. K said, you might keep more cash on hand, take smaller positions or just hang out. If you're up for the year like I am, you know, my, my tendency is just to bag it and sit back and, and let things uh, finish out and see where we go next year. Uh, but we'll see, you know. Uh, we could get a sell-off in here maybe the first time. I mean, after all, it's a QE market, and I don't think we've seen a major top in this market for the last six years, roughly. So, uh, five and a half, say. So, who knows uh, in what's going to happen from here. But I think you're seeing some chinks in the market's armor. Whether that turns into something serious remains to be seen. You're kind of at a critical level here with the NASDAQ sitting just above the 50-day. I'd be watching for a break. Uh, looking at individual stocks, you know, like I said, Facebook is trying to base. Uh, Netflix has been a big leader. It's holding along a 20-day. That looks like it's trying to hold. So they may, this may bring it into a viable position. Um, Amazon uh, pulling into the 20-day moving average. Uh, Dr. K, this has held the 10-day line for more than uh, seven weeks. Would you use the 10-week or the 10-day line as, a, as your selling guide, or would you use a 50-day on this one? 
Yeah, I mean, when it when it starts to show that kind of uh, length of uh, respecting moving average, uh, I would use that moving average because then it shows that this is something that's changed fundamentally, well, technically rather, in terms of the way the stock's behaving. Right, and it also seems to hold on the pullbacks. It holds a 20-day exponential. But it's holding up okay, and uh, rather tightly up here. But you, you know, you've had a big move in Amazon on the weekly chart down here. We can see this, so it could pull into the 50-day moving average. That's a possibility, um, and that's one that's been acting well. But you know, it's really gone nowhere for the last week. Same thing with Google. Even though you had a couple of pocket pivots in here, I think one here, uh, and then one over. Whoops, and then one over here a few days ago. But yeah, now it's just under the 20-day moving average. Is that good? Is that bad? What does it mean? If you look at it, the reality is it's like a $72 stock at $76. So how much of a move, you know, month and a half to go where? To go not much anywhere. And that seems to be typical of most of these moves. You're not seeing much more than 10%. I think Amazon's had one of the better moves, as has Netflix. But other than that, you know, you get your 10%. And uh, you know you take off and put it in the bank. One stock that has worked out pretty well this week is GoDaddy, and this was setting up. You can see the Voodoo uh, dry up right at the 20-day, and then it just ignores the market and continues higher and breaks out. Of course, when it gets extended, if you bought it down here, you get a little over 10% on the move up to 35.25. And in my book, you sell that and take your profit, let it come in, and then see what you want to do. But you're looking at a cup with handle type breakout. The cup's pretty deep. Yeah, I don't know if that's an issue, but you know it is. It's working, but is this going to be big leadership that's going to take this market higher? I'm not so sure. Uh, but for now, the stock has gone higher, so it's been working. Um, I don't see any questions. You guys must be asleep. I, I mean, I got to admit, I'm practically falling asleep here. This market is like, blah. You know, it, it seems like um, you know the market's had such a level of complacency since 2009 because uh, the corrections are always generally limited and the corrections right. have become more shallow in the last couple of years. Uh, but what has changed is that there is no more, you know, of this uh, QE3, QE2, Operation Twist, etc. And the, the Fed's going to most likely uh, hike rates. Um, maybe it's a token rate hike, but uh, I don't think the market is showing uh, any sort of belief that uh, the economy is really turning the corner. That's why it's just not not uh, uptrending as it should. Um, at the same time, it, there's a complacency, and uh, all the fund managers got to keep up with their bogeys. So when the market shows some strength, they all pile back in, um, especially to these big cap, uh, lower risk names, um, especially the, like the, the Googles, the Amazons, eBay, etc. Uh, that's why the uh, Nasdaq 100 has been, I guess, the, the leading index, or at least the one that hits the hits new highs first, ahead of everything else. Meanwhile, the risk, the riskier names, which are the smaller cap names, which comprise the Russell 2000, have been sorely lagging um, the rest of the market. Uh, so it's almost like this psychological tug of war uh, that's been ongoing all year round, and. Uh, I, I think it'll come down to, uh, as it always does, you know, it's it's the economy. You know, does, does the economy really start to, to move higher? Um, from the looks of things globally and just based on a lot of these uh, metrics that we look at, um, I'm not convinced at all. You know, I, I think that, that the Fed, all these central banks have been printing all this money for so many years, and <clears throat> there's going to be a big price to pay. And I, I think that I don't think we can get real healthy markets um, until – that all washes out. Uh, so in other words, perhaps we're going to see uh, a proper bear market um, before we see any sort of meaningful uptrend. Yeah, I mean, I, one scenario I could see is a nice bear market leading into the beginning of the year, or a big pullback, and then we start to uh, come out of it as the election approaches and the prospect of getting a more business-friendly administration and some real changes that help to stimulate the economy rather than uh, the idea that you can just keep taxing the 1% uh, and you're going to solve all your problems rather than creating growth again uh, and people getting real jobs, I think that, that that's a possibility. So, yeah, but you can run through a lot of scenarios and uh, nothing really pans out the way you expect it to. So, I mean, my expectation is that we should probably get a, a Santa Claus rally of sorts uh, into year end, but, you know, somebody points out there's been a pattern of uh, the, the rally starting in the second half of the year, just like we saw last year, and uh, and that's true. So you know, I don't know if that means we're going to see it next start next week, 
or what, but but to assume that things are always going to be as they have in the past, I don't know. We're in a bizarre environment, I think, and it remains fairly distorted. Anyways, um, looking around at some names, Twitter is jamming. They're presenting at a conference. I think Facebook might be too. That now that's up a buck. Just wondering whether these moves aren't shortable. Um, and uh, that's pushing up. It's had some pocket pivot volume signatures, but that you had one here. It didn't keep it from going lower. You had another one here at the low. So it's trying. It's undercutting these lows here now, and it's looking like I don't know. Is it bottomed or is it headed lower? My, my general view. I don't know if you agree with this, Dr. K, but I think eventually, Twitter's that no longer exists. So. What else? Let's see. Somebody's asking about DY, constructive voodoo. Uh, I don't know. You're seeing higher volume on the way down. It's all the way to the 50. It looks like garbage. So I don't know. I guess you could take a shot at it here and see if it holds the 50-day moving average. So the thing with uh, these pullbacks is as long as you can find a spot where your risk is low. In other words, you have a, a close by reference point for a stop, which you do in this case at the 50-day moving average, and you're fine. You can take the shot. Uh, whether it actually works or not, I guess, is another story altogether. So, so you know, figure it out. I know a lot of people like to, you know, you can see that the setup, okay, so it's pretty objective. It's pulling all the way back here to the 50-day line. And uh, a lot of people seem to ask us questions about stocks as if I'm supposed to tell you whether this is, yes, you should buy it because it's going to rally. I have no idea. What I will say is that you can take a shot because you do have a close by reference point for a tight stop. So anyways, um, let's see. Apple, I don't know. Apple, I think, is a short every time it hits 120. It's sitting at the 50-day line. I, I'm not, I don't know. I, I, this this is tricky because you still have this this big ugly head and shoulders and it really needs to clear overhead in here. I guess if you had a, a Santa Claus rally in the second half of the month, then you might see it try to break out and maybe you could catch a trade. I mean, it could rally back up to the highs. That's a possibility. That'd give you about 10% from here, which is about the norm for any long swing trade in this market. So that's a possibility. So someone's asking about TKS. TKS. What is that? Doesn't seem to be. It's invalid symbol. Uh, you know what? Here's one I'm short. Workday. I got short it yesterday. Volume picked up. It reversed. Uh, it, you can see here it's it's up near an area of resistance. So what I'll do is I'll use this high at 85 or so, or even the high this week at 84. I think it is 84.40 as a stop, and then come after it here using the 620, looking for a break of the 200 day line. I might not get it, but it, so far it's up a, a little over a buck for me, so that that's kind of working, but nothing terribly exciting. Another one is Priceline, which uh, on the weekly chart is just pretty ugly. This is a jagged double bottom with the second low uh, higher than the first low, so that's technically improper, but it had a, a tradable move to the upside of about, uh, not, not quite 10%, but uh, it did, and then that's breaking down, and now you're rallying back up towards the 10-week line and the 50-day line. So I'm watching this one. If it got up here, it might become a short again. So that's one possibility. I'm, I'm watching a number of these names that have been rallying that have been on my short sale watch list as we move up. Just in case Santa gets shot down by a SAM missile or a surface-to-air missile. Oh, TKS equals thanks. Okay, well, I'm not really a texter, so I don't... No, I usually put THX for thanks, but you know, I'm an old fart, and I guess we have our own old fart ways of doing things that aren't as hip as TKS. So I'll just file that one and make a note of that. Thank you. Uh, let's see. ABX. Uh oh. Somebody wants to buy gold stocks. American Barrick. Well, this is what it looks like on a weekly chart, and that's about as butt ugly as you could be, and it kind of looks like gold, which looks about as butt ugly as you can be, but. I, I think if the Fed doesn't raise rates, you might get a tradable bounce here. But I think you're basically betting that the Fed does nothing next week. And I, I'm going to take a, a flying leap here, and I'm going to make a prediction that they do nothing next week. They can't do anything. That's my general view. So I might be wrong, but I, I don't really see how you know what the point of raising rates is. Like Janet Yellen said last week, they could lower rates if, after they rose raised rates and. So if that's really what it is, we're just going to flip it back and forth, kind of like what the market's been doing. 
without anything decisive happening, what happens then? You just create more uncertainty for the markets, and I don't think the markets will like that. I could be wrong, but you know, it, it just seems like they don't really know what they're doing, and you wonder if that's ever going to figure into the grand scheme of things. Uh, anyways, somebody says, if Fed does nothing, market may crash on fears of deflation. Yeah, and it may do it anyways. Um, you know, I don't know. It's just trying to work through this on an intellectual, or give it, give it some, you know, using intellectual arguments or trying to give it some rhyme or reason. It almost seems like a futile uh, exercise, you know. Uh, like I said, I just feel in, in terms of any trades I've done, they start to make money and then they don't, and that and it works on both sides of the market. And, and unless I'm trading on a, you know, it seems like a two-hour uh, investment horizon. Uh, rapid fire, you know, day trading all, all the time. It doesn't seem like there's a way to make any significant progress. So there's no big money really to be made out there. You're just flipping it back and forth. And so, you know, maybe the the Fed, no matter what the Fed does, the market tanks because it's thinking about what's coming rather than what's already happened. So who knows, you know? All I know is I'm seeing some divergence in the indexes. The breadth is still poor. It's still a big cap market. So you can operate on the basis that if we're going to get a uh, Santa Claus rally, it's probably going to happen with the big cap stocks. They're going to, all going to move higher. You're going to see Facebook move higher, break out. Maybe Apple will come out. Uh, maybe uh, Google and Amazon will break out and push higher. Maybe Microsoft, which... Look at that. If that isn't slow-mo, I don't know what is. Uh, just, just look at this thing. It's just hanging out, going nowhere. And going nowhere very slowly, if that's possible. Um, so not really much you know, much action there. Uh, what other big cap stocks have been acting well? well? Intel is holding tight sideways, but going nowhere. So is this setting up to break out? Maybe it is. You know, I guess you know if you see something like this you, and you see the volume... On the downside, drying up like you see three days ago, it holds at the 10 day line to get a nice voodoo volume signature. I suppose you could come in and uh, and buy that with the idea that it should hold at least the 20 day line. So I think there are stocks in positions that they can be bought, but the question then becomes risk management in case something goes awry with the market. And, uh, and also, you're looking for something that's going to make you some real money, not, not just a point or two on the upside, you know. Um, we need something really to sink our teeth into, and this market just hasn't offered it. So, and you can be frustrated by that, or just accept it for what what it is, because that happens sometimes. Um, ILMN has a good chart. Uh, well, that's what it looks like on a weekly. I, I wouldn't say that's a good chart. What you've got going on here is stock that rallied has rallied higher. Uh, off after just blowing apart. So all this is is a reaction rally. I don't think it's a good chart. You're running into the underside of this base here. You see that? And you've run into resistance along that level. Now, if it was close to the 200 day, I would actually look at this as a short. You know, rather than thinking it's a good chart and it's going to go higher. Because when you look at things on a weekly, and, and I would advise looking at things on a weekly chart rather than looking at everything on a daily and saying, oh, that's a great chart. The stock got started moving because it was added to the S&P 500. I don't know if people are still buying it. So, you know what? I just, just noticed I tagged tagged some Apple short here. How high did this thing get? I didn't. I really wasn't paying attention. Huh? Got up to one sixteen sixty nine. I didn't even notice that. And I guess I it clicked off a trade for me. Uh, on the short side, so I've got a little short position here now. Let's see if this works. It's coming in 116.07. Everything's coming in now. Yeah, and I wouldn't even. I would say even Facebook maybe is a short, and it's going to head to the 50-day for a quick scalp. It, it's kind of the way it's been acting. You know, it runs up and it comes back in. I've been playing this both ways for the last couple of weeks. Uh, the net result is a lot of work and not much on on the profit side. So. Uh, I'm also watching for this market to do what it did yesterday when we were up 100. What was it? 190? Was it? I think I saw 190, and then I went off to get some tea, and I was gone for maybe four or five minutes, Dr. K. And uh, and I come back, and, and and we're up like 20 something, and it's like 170 points have just gone poof, disappeared. 
in the in yeah, the. Yeah, and I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? So somebody said, uh, somebody I was tweeting with, I guess said it was oil prices, and they they correlated, I, I suppose. But you know, it's always something, as my Jewish grandmother would say, it's always something. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, actually, it peaked at I think 100 up 199, yeah. and then it did a prompt face. Oh gosh! Oh, here's one I like. Here's a good example of you know you have a nice uh, stock. It, it comes into the 10 day, 20 day. You buy it there. It runs up, pulls in, runs up, pulls in, runs up, pulls in, runs up, and then it breaks down. And now you're sitting here. These guys came out with a 150 million dollar secondary convertible bond offering, and they tanked on that news. And uh, they're hovering along the 50-day. And I'm wondering if this pattern now is busted. you got a huge uh, volume break off the peak. A lot of times, you know, at least in the past, that used to be trouble. Uh, I remember the old-time O'Neill institutional guys. Uh, you remember those guys like Jim Miller or Bill McGann or, or Steve uh, Greenfield. Yeah. They always talked about that uh, with their institutional clients as being a rule for when you start exiting a position if you've had a big move in it. When you see the biggest downside weekly volume off the peak, you start pairing the position back. Um, so I don't know, is that, is that trouble? Is that the end of the run for Infi, or is it going to just base out and maybe set up for next year? I like the story. Um, yeah, I'm seeing Apple heading for 116 now. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just put, I, I rarely use stop orders. I know someone emailed me a question about the NYSC is going to uh, abolish stop orders. Which, um, after people got hosed royally in August, on the August 26th, on that capitulation Monday, if you guys recall, where I think they took stocks like uh, Facebook down to, did that go down to 70, yeah, look at this thing, it traded all the way down the low, was 72 even. And they just took people out and uh, and then turn it back up. That To me, that all seems manipulative. There we go, the Dow's up 97 and starting to flip back the other way. I've uh, seen Apple dip below 116, but what I'll do is I'll come in and if I think if there's a rally and I think it's it's probably going to fail, which I'm thinking this one is based on what I was talking about in terms of the divergences I'm seeing in the indexes in the broader market versus this small group of big cap names that has been leading the rally in the NDX. Um, I'll just set a, a stop a, a short sale order, a limit order up high, and see if they come after it or if they pick it off. So sometimes they go off. A lot of times. Uh, a high that you think it has no chance of getting to, it'll hit it, and then that'll be the end of it. So far, that seems to be the case with Apple. If we look at this, uh, let's look at a 620 on some of these. So that, all it's to say is I, I am willing to probe the short side. Here's Facebook. Not really 620-ing yet. Yeah, might watch for that. Uh, here comes Apple breaking down off the peak. See that? It runs up. They bring it down. It's hovering right above, let's see, 50 days at 115.86. It's hovering right above the line right now. So it's kind of a do or do die spot. If it breaks down, I could see it heading to these lows down around 108 uh, or possibly lower. So um, any other caught questions here? Nope. Okay, I'll just continue babbling. Uh, airlines. Airlines looking great. You know, here's Love, Southwest Airlines pushing up. I think we even put out a pocket pivot alert on this one. Broke out, running up, and then it gaps down and blows apart, and now it's back at the 50-day line. Are you going to buy it there? I suppose you could try, but you know, good luck with that. It just, to me, uh, it's just a risky proposition. If you look at this on a weekly chart, it's not looking so good. It's a big cup with a high handle, if you want to call it that, and you have a big outside reversal on the week on heavy volume. They lowered their uh, unit growth guidance, which I guess means the number of people that fly on their planes. And that cratered the whole group because I think you can just pull up any of them and they all got hit. This one's holding up a little better. Let's see, UAL. UAL. Not KUAL. I'm not sure how that K got in. It's trying to come back. But Virgin America got slammed. And this was acting well. They, they announced a $26 million, uh, 26 million share secondary offering. But the, the way the filing reads, what it is is three big sellers who are going to be selling from time to time. So it's not a big offering. They're not getting the getting it out of the way, but it's 26 million shares more than the 19 million share float that's going to come into the market. And it, and I guess that's why the stock rebounded after that news uh, that was reported not in very much detail by Briefing.com and I think also Fly on the Wall. 
And so there wasn't really clear picture. I guess I learned a lesson here that when, when in doubt, go to the SEC side and read the filing, and you'll it'll tell you what's going on. But th this thing broke down, and now it's back at the lows of this range. And so, you know, another one, it looks good for a while. Even if you bought into the, the action here on this pocket pivot, and you say you bought the pullback here, and now you're breaking out, everything looks wonderful, and it just kind of poops out. So Avago is, uh, well, what about Avago? What do you want to know? It's a viable gap up. I think we put an alert out on it. The stop here would be the low at 142.88. It's holding tight. So if you like it, you can maybe try and stay with it and wait for it to blow below that low, just like LinkedIn blew on its uh, pocket pivot or Bible gap up, I'm sorry. And notice how this thing is trying to find support at the 10-week line. Hold on. That's got to be the strangest phone call I've ever gotten on my cell phone. The number, uh, the ID, it's uh, the number it's IDing is 0600. I wonder what that means. In any case, this thing is failing, and uh, I, I thought once it broke down here on this rally yesterday, it was a short, and that worked out. Maybe it's going to be, uh, maybe it's a short again here, and it's going to break for the 50-day moving average. But again, you have a very a deep, ugly pattern. It's more failure prone than anything else. So once it blew this low, I felt that once, if it couldn't hold the 20 day on the pullback, because that would be orderly and showing some strength at least, because it's holding well above the BGU low at 236, a couple of percent. I felt it should hold that. Once it didn't, it, it was starting to look shortable to me. And you notice it didn't rally with the market last Thursday. So this one's looking like trouble. Uh, you know, getting back to the Savaga, there's also with some moves in. Uh, Skyworks Solutions was just starting to peter out. That's what the pattern looks like. You, you basically have a head and shoulders. You're forming more right shoulders, and you're rallying. You come rallying up into this area here, which is where prior resistance is. This may become a short uh, at that point right there. So you know, got up to 88 here. There's really no uh, clear resistance here. It would be at the 200 day up here. But it's kind of flopping around. But this whole group, you've seen them try to come back. NXP, I thought was a short uh, last week uh, at the, uh, in fact, I might have talked about it as a short last week at the 200-day moving average. It went lower, bouncing off the 50-day. I'd watch for a rally up into the 10-day at 89.63. That might be another short sale mm -hmm. entry point. So, um, SQ square. I think square is interesting, but it's not going to go anywhere if we're in a weak market. You need some kind of a uh, breakout from the current ranges, I think, to get this thing going. But if you look at this, since it came public, uh, came was uh, priced at nine bucks, and it's forming a flag here. It started to get going, and then it pulled back. There was no pocket pivot here. I, I think you're getting to the point where one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're looking at maybe uh, this day right here, which would be uh, two million seven hundred eighty thousand shares it traded, would be your volume for a pocket pivot coming up through the 10-day line. But I don't think it's going anywhere unless the market starts going somewhere. And it started to move on uh, Monday, uh, even as the market was selling off, I think, and then it kind of pooped out and uh, ended up not going anywhere. So I'm watching Apple now coming back under 116. The market's is up 91 on the Dow. Uh, Nasdaq just kind of stalling a little bit. It's, you know, it's still just a big roulette wheel. Spin the wheel and see what comes up. And uh, let's see, other names that have looked interesting, like Monster is one that was looking like it was setting up, but it tries to break out here and it's still going nowhere. Now you're getting some volume hitting it and not really happening. Uh, Baba is one a lot of people have asked about, and it's trying to come back. It's in this little cup with handle. You look at the pattern overall, though. You got some overhead uh, resistance here, and I'm not sure if this is a, a problem. It, it, it may take some time to work through it if it's going to go higher, but I don't know. It's in a risky position. I guess if you think it's going higher, you could buy it here and use a 20-day as your your stop. But again, it's a little bit of the roulette wheel here. I think. Um, <clears throat> CRM, Salesforce, 
hanging out. You know, it's going nowhere. You had a viable gap up, but it's gone nowhere. And it's been viable along these lows, so maybe it's viable here right now. I'm watching it, and I'm open to, you know, whatever whatever it wants to do. On the, the 620, I'm not seeing anything here. Let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of sputtering back and forth, not getting really a, a strong buy signal or anything. So to me, it's still kind of fluttering, and it could fail. Uh, it is a little bit up there. If you look at this, uh, this is really your breakout here, and then you have to pull back to the top of the base, and you've moved higher. So the viable gap is occurring in a position that's a little bit high, and it might be considered late stage. If you look at that, it's been a long-term trend, and uh, it could fail. And and I think this is some. Go ahead, Dr. K. It almost strikes me as it's like a day trading stock. Because if you look at the weekly, it's just yes. it never really gets knows it's a very sloppy pattern and it doesn't care about the 50 day or even the 200 um, so uh, you know if you if, if if some people who you know are listening like the swing trade yeah it gives you a good uh, if you can nail the swing trade just right yeah the time value is pretty good for like two or three days but right um, these are very nice. yeah and I just been I buy it on the lows here it runs up to the highs here sell it and you do it over and over again you make a few percent but nothing you know, and then you have another trade where you're losing a couple of percent, so you're really going nowhere. Uh, let's see, JetBlue was another airline I think that got, whoops, come on, got tangled fingers here. Uh, it's going nowhere. See, it tried to break out, you had a nice pocket pivot, but it's going nowhere fast. Uh, let's see, Away was an interesting name, it's been hitting my screens. you got some pocket pivots in here. Uh, but I don't know, you look at that chart and I don't know, That's that's not really... Look at that. Yuck. That's what you're seeing a lot of this. And I don't think these are strong patterns. I think they look like garbage. Uh, with the airlines yeah, wait, having done well, GoGo -Go was on a comeback. Go ahead, Dr. K. You were saying? Yeah, wait, it's, just like, it's like a CRM. You look at the weekly and, you know, just a snapshot of, you know, the weekly going back, you know, two, three years. And it just never gets going. No, you're right. Since it's come public, it's, it's really just still in the big, gigantic IPO base. Dow's up 89, starting to lose some altitude here. You know, it would not surprise me to see this thing break down and reverse like it did yesterday. So, it's just crazy. There's just no, no real rhythm, or you know, there maybe there is a, a rhythm, but it's more like an arrhythmia more than a rhythm. So. Uh, go go. Getting back to go go. I thought go go was viable down here. So I don't know if anybody here follows me on Twitter, but I did tweet something about this being an ugly duckling trade down here around 16 bucks because it was it had gapped up and it, it's moved higher. But you know, if you did buy it down there, it's it's pretty extended off the lows. It's looking like it's trying to come up, but look at the weekly pattern. You know, that's not really the sort of thing you're looking for. There's a lot of overhead, and I don't know. Is this just going to take off and have a big move? It's had a decent move from here, but you figure 16 to 19 is about 20%. So that's something you take and put in the bank, you know, rather than hanging around thinking you're getting a long-term move and make millions and millions of dollars, like like IBD tells you you can make, uh, you know, as easily as one, two, three. Dow's now under plus 80, up 70. So yeah, see, we're reversing now. Uh, so maybe I should look at some shorts. Celgene, uh, at the 20-day line. This might be a short here. It's It's been running into resistance along the 20-day moving average, and it's been weak. Uh, you use the 20-day line as a stop. Here you, you have Gilead, which has been shortable after it broke the 50-day line last week. Okay, the blue line here, it's kind of thin. Hopefully you can see it. And it was shortable there yesterday, so that was good for a quick scalp. Uh, I've been watching the other big... Big stock biotechs. Biogen is neither here nor there, but this is what the overall pattern looks like. That is pretty ugly. And so I think you're you're probably forming this big, ugly head and shoulders. I guess a rally up in the 320 is not out of the cards. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. This is, uh, it's it's sitting along the line here. It doesn't really want to go anywhere. It could move towards the 200 day. It could break down. So it's hard to figure what's going on here. Amgen's another one that's been acting well. And now it's hovering along the 200-day line. This is what it looks like on the weekly chart. And if you, see, you look at this, whoops, let's see. Make this a little bigger. You can see it's a late-stage base fail. You've rallied back up to the breakout point. So it, it actually could become shortable up here. 
I think your stop would be around 164 max. Dow's up 68. So notice how it's just slowly, well, not so slowly, I guess just steadily uh, coming apart here. Let's see, let me take a look at this. See, see it coming in now. They run it up. You know, this is like yesterday. They run it up real strongly. Everything, big blue bars to the upside, and now it just kind of trickles away. They suck everybody in, and they chew them up, and then spit them out again. And this is kind of the uh, pattern, silica bottom fissure. You know, I think you're, get, you're guessing as to whether you're going to get a bottom in oil prices. I thought the stock could have been bought, you know, back in here. But I'm not going to buy this. I, again, you're, you're not in a pattern that's anywhere near being viable. You're, just, you're so far down off, uh, down at the lows that you're just hoping for some kind of reaction. And I don't think there's any fundamental basis for buying this thing or thematic basis, unless you believe that oil is suddenly going to spring back to life. Maybe if the Russians start lobbing nukes into Syria. I, I, yesterday... Vladimir Putin, this is a big headline, Vladimir Putin did uh, mention that they're sending uh, submarines that can uh, fire cruise missiles that can be equipped with uh, or, or with nuclear uh, weapons on them, uh, and they, they he hopes they don't have to use them. See, that's the difference between us and the Russians. We would never use tactical nukes anymore because you might kill civilians, kind of like we did in World War II, you know, when we firebombed Dresden in Germany and when we nuked uh, Japan and killed hundreds of thousands of civilians. We didn't seem to have a problem with that. Uh, but the Russians have never had a problem with killing civilians, so they'll they'll be happy to use their nukes if they're pushed to that point. And uh, if, if something like that went off, maybe that would shoot, uh, send prices, oil prices shooting to the upside. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I think that... Uh, if you're trying to play oil stocks, it's just not, to me, not happening. I thought CLR might maybe had a chance, but that's a big fracking name. What's, what are some other, uh, is XOMs? No, XOM, yeah, uh, that's kind of, you see, this is where everything is. So there's nothing here that's really playable in my view, and you're kind of stretching. So somebody says ANIK was on my watch list, but it had a heart attack today. Yeah, these are... Uh, Do I see anything that m might have indicated trouble? Uh, maybe the fact that they don't make any money? Is that right? Did Dr. K, does that thing show any earnings? Just checking. Um, you know, and with the, uh, of course, as everyone knows, uh, yeah, no, it does have earnings, um, but it is a biotech, so it's uh, subject to greater volatility and greater gap ups and gap downs. Yeah. And uh, the pattern, it just never... <laughs> This seems to be the thematic uh, these days. Um, at least for the last uh, couple years, this stock has really gone nowhere. Um, yeah, it did have a good run in, in 2013 and 2011, but not since then. So uh, I'd be very careful about trading this kind of stock or putting any money into it just because it also, in the pattern, you'll see back in July of uh, 2014 and then February of uh, 2015, these, and also late April, end of April, you, know, you have these periods where this stock just gets slammed, you know, in one day, um, it loses, let, let, let's see, yeah, it loses more than 10%, um, or in, in one case, 16%, etc. So, uh, it's a sloppy pattern, therefore your risk is greater in, in playing a stock like this. Right, and look at the, the overall, the, the weekly pattern isn't showing anything really. You had a nice move off the lows, but, you know, sometimes you have to know when you're good and when you're just lucky and I think biotechs are always subject to this sort of out of the blue type of news uh, news uh, sort of risk and, and I think it works both ways I think I was telling you last week about I was out at a golf tournament and some broker was talking to me about a stock he bought at 19 this one here and it was up around here and I looked at the pattern uh, on my iPhone looking at stockcharts.com and I told him I would sell that and uh, of course he started telling me that you know, it's a long-term story, and they're, they've got this great drug. It, the thing had just had news here, I think, uh, on this day of a phase one trial or something working out pretty well for them or something. But it's still, it's still early, and they don't make any money. So these are all high risk. And even the biotechs that make money can run into trouble. You know, there's look at this VRX. You know, this is a great example of something that... Uh, 
dust came apart and nothing flat. But there was this clue here. See the head and shoulders? So we could have shorted it right there. I noticed a rallying. Let's see, Twitter is rallying. LinkedIn is not rallying. And Facebook is rallying. And these guys are all presenting at a conference, I guess. So, you know, the world is their oyster, and they're telling everyone how much money they're going to make. I would watch these rallies because I think they could become shortable because they're news generated and I think they are based on the appearance at some some uh, internet social networking conference baloney so I'm kinda of watching these right now let's take a look at these real quick on 620s this is where I'd be watching them here for a turn Twitter hanging out but it's getting close to a point where it might become uh, shortable Facebook is just jamming along. So they must have just, you know, talked about something wonderful. Maybe Mark Zuckerberg is continuing to reach out to uh, Muslims. I guess that was his big news over the the uh, overnight. I guess. Uh, although I think Facebook really should figure out how to uh, police their website personally. But uh, let's see, Workday. I think I already talked about that. I think it's a short. I mean, I shorted it yesterday. And you had a 620 signal early today, and it's just continued lower. Um, I think that's why I showed it. That was yesterday, actually. It's just continued lower. Yeah, again, uh, Jerry, you got to remember, uh, biotechs, whenever you buy a biotech, if I buy, buy a biotech and I make some decent money, and I'm usually selling into it. Uh, they just you, you just have that risk, especially if they're they're not making any money. But they can have nice moves. I think you just have to play them on a short-term basis. And I'm never going to take a big position in any of these things. So I remember another broker bragging to me about this one, you know, and it was going higher, and you know, he's buying more here and telling me how great it is. And I'm not sure what happened to him at this point. Maybe he had a heart attack and died. Now was up 77, kind of starting to roll over here. Um, Hmm. Anyways, I already talked about work workday. I just think it's uh, it may be in a shortable position. So I I'll test it. Okay, if I don't really have any reference points here, but I see that it, uh, outside of just resistance here, because near these highs, then what I'll do is on a daily basis, on an intraday basis, I'll just use the 620 chart to try and figure out. Uh, what's going on? So there must be something exciting going on with Twitter at this conference. I wonder if Facebook is there too. It's the Barclays Global Technology, Media, and Telecommunications Conference. I don't see that Facebook is uh, presenting. I'm looking. I'm looking at the well. No, they are presenting. So conference in progress. Facebook. I don't see LinkedIn. Maybe that's not. Maybe that's why they're not rallying. But like I said, you know, I think you want to watch these because I think they might set up shortable moves. Uh, any other questions? I'm near the end of the hour at this point. Uh, let's look at some quickly run through some other names. Tesla. I think it's a short at the 200 day. It's at the 50. So you're looking for a bounce here. Uh, price line I talked about as a short. Uh, let's see. BMW is another doggy one. Here's another one. I think this one's a short. Use a 10-day as a stop. To me, it looks like it wants to break out to the downside, but it is way down there. So that's a little bit tricky. Uh, if the Fed doesn't raise rates, then I think you're going to see some of these financials get into trouble. I'm looking at Northern Trust. I think I've talked about this one on the rally. You want to watch this. Now you busted the 200-day. It becomes a short using the 200-day at 7302 as a very tight stop. Notice that the 50-day is right here, so you want to see some confirmation of it busting uh, to the downside, which I think could happen. Uh, the, and you're seeing this occur. You know, J.P. Morgan is starting to wobble a little bit, sitting at the 200-day, 50-day. But you got to watch these because these could all bust. Uh, Wells Fargo, which never really got going, I think. Yeah, and so the XLF, too, you look at that, and it's a little wobbly. And if, if the Fed doesn't raise rates, these are all going to tank. And if financials get dragged down, I'm not sure what that means for the market in 
general, I think that may be a problem. So, but you know, overall, I just think we're in a very risky uh, environment, and it's just you know Jekyll and Hyde type moves. The market goes one way, and then it splits the other way. Stocks start moving one way, and then they get whacked the other way. And it, it doesn't strike me. And, and you know, if any of you want to kind of pipe up on this and offer your comments, I don't get the sense. Maybe you want to argue with me on this too, Dr. K, if you think there's another, uh, there's something else going on. But it seems like it's just machines, trading with machines. So in other words, a market that is of, by, and for the algorithms, and that's all you've got. And it's just flipping back and forth, and they're, they're just running them up one day, selling them off the next, and net, net, nothing really goes anywhere. What do you think of that theory, Dr. K? I think uh, because we're at this tipping point, um, it's a psychological tipping point between uh, you know, factors like quantitative easing, uh, t money tightening, uh, a very poorly performing global economy. Uh, so you have these artificial manipulations pushing everything higher, but then you've got these uh, real world facts that keep a lid on any kind of meaningful uptrend. Um, and so I think while the market is in this um, period of uns deep uncertainty, uh, one of the deepest uncertainties, you get these sideways sloppy periods and, uh, you know, basically the machines will rule the day in those periods because yeah. the market doesn't want to really make, go in and do anything meaningful in either direction. So, yeah, of course, the machines will rule the day and that's what I think we've seen this year. Uh, but they will not rule the day forever. I mean, the one thing that uh, doesn't change is change. It will we'll always get a different type of market um, at some point. And uh, we will get some sort of meaningful trend in either direction at some point. So, therefore, you know, and I, I actually, if you look back decades of, of, of news articles, whenever people start to say trend following is dead, and trend following has been declared dead many, many times in the last hundred years, uh, that's usually when the market starts to trend again. So I'm thinking we're getting close to that period again where, where people are going to start to officially declare trend, trend following dead because look at this year as, I guess, testimony. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, that'll, that'll put a smile on my face if, you know, you see other than the headline news or cover of Newsweek or something uh, to that effect. Uh, that'll be actually uh, good news in a, um, in, a, in a contrarian way. Yeah. Well, I did note that IBD is now teaching a swing trading uh module or whatever in their uh, in their weekend masters can slim program or whatever it's called and uh, I think now that they finally figured out that it's a swing trading market I'm not sure how you do it. I think I was pointing out this out last week I, if you're buying breakouts I'm not re really sure what there is to, to swing trade uh, if you're buying pocket pivots down lower in a base then you definitely have swing trading possibilities for you know 10 percent maybe more 20 percent if you get lucky uh, profits, but I, I don't really see how you swing trade uh, operating from a position of buying breakouts, new high breakouts, because nothing really seems to work in that regard. So, you know, it's, it's, I think they're probably late to the party and they don't really understand how to swing trade, but they got to sell you something. So the fact that they're now offering this um, as something they're going to teach you how to do, uh, I think is uh, interesting and just shows that they have now realized that their methods aren't really all, all that optimal in this market and it's just not the kind of market for breakouts uh, to work. So someday they will work, work again. We'll have big moves, you know, that they're, they'll happen again. But I, who knows when? What if this goes on for another year? Jeez. I don't think I could stand. I may have to take up golf in a more serious fashion. Uh, let's see. Somebody says, Algos have 70% of trading market. That's true. Uh, somebody says, maybe we'll start to see the market trend down instead of up. I tend to think, Scotty, that's where the next trend lies, speaking for myself. But, you know, I'm sort of a maniac that way. But um, let's see here. All right, I'm going to short 50,000 Facebook right here. No, I'm kidding. <clears throat> Twitter looks kind of juicy up here. It may become uh, shorter. But I keep an eye on these. So you get a 620 signal, you may want to act on that. Um, any other questions before we sign off here? So you know, I'm gonna. I would have to say not a lot of to, not a lot of things to sink your teeth into here in this market. 
I've got some short sale targets I'm watching uh, and may come after them. But again, the second half of the year may see the traditional Santa Claus upside move. doesn't necessarily have to be a big old rally. But uh, we may get that. And I think that, that might be tradable. But again, you get back to this idea of where do you make big money and it's just not there. And if you think about it, is it really your, worth your while to rack your brain trying to make money in an environment that's being ruled by uh, machines that are just slapping everything back and forth. And uh, for my own money, you know, taking my profits for the year probably and just going Christmas shopping is probably going to be more profitable even though I'm spending money uh, than trying to trade this thing. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm not, I am willing though to test short side and small size, not getting too aggressive here. Maybe I get a break for a couple of days and then we'll see whether we move into a uh, end of the year rally. But I think, how many trading days we got? We only got like 13, 14, 15 full trading days left. I think Christmas is on a Friday, so that means New Year's is as well. And I think the days before, uh, the day before Christmas is a half day, and the day before New Year's I think is a full day. Anybody know for sure? We've got like 12 or 13 trading days left. How many? I think like 12 or 13. That's about it. Yeah, so there's not much time left, you know. I don't know. I think it's just the time to drink heavily spiked eggnog and chill. Anyways, we'll see what happens, you guys, but uh, not not too much going on. Sometimes it's better to do less than more and just kind of hang out and see how things play out. So on that note, and if you guys have any questions about stocks or anything, you feel free to email us. So I did get some Facebook short off at 105.83. It's coming in a little bit. Um, I just did that for the hell of it, frankly. But you can see now, see I can actually move the market with my trades. See that? Look at that thing. It's coming down hard now. Um, Twitter's probably next. Uh, moving back to the highs. I don't know. This is looking triable. Anyways, you guys, I'm keeping an eye on these things. Uh, Full day before the day before New Year's. Okay, so we have one half day before Christmas, and then a, so that means we got 13 full days left after today, I believe. And we'll just see what happens. But you know, it's just a messy, sloppy, choppy, and uh, I think if you're trying to get too aggressive, a frustrating environment. So you know, hang loose, play it loose, and we'll see where we are next week at this time. All right, you guys, take care. Have a great weekend. So everyone.